thank you so much for connecting with us for our weekly session and um, we've been dealing on the topic of prayer for a number of weeks now you're more than welcome to go back and watch the others i know for some of you it's foundational it's like oh, paul this is stuff i know and the problem with that statement is you then assume everyone knows and a lot of people don't know the basics and it's good to re revisit the basics of our faith, the basics of prayer, and to rebuild or correct some of the things that have maybe sneaked in over time. So I'm quite, I'm quite attentive when people are talking and um, I listen to what they say about prayer or I will ask pertinent questions and hear what the response is. And one of the things that has come come out of this um, pursuit of mine to know more about prayer is some people don't know who to pray to. Uh, I was watching uh, a teaching by, well, it was an introduction to a book by David Pawson that he wrote on prayer. And he said, we pray to the Father, through the Spirit, by the Son, and often against the enemy okay and that is like is such a nice picture for me but a lot of people don't understand that okay, i'm praying to the father why the father i'm praying through the spirit where does the holy spirit feature in this and we'll address that later and why am i praying in jesus name and and what is this about praying against the enemy well most of our prayers go against what the enemy wants because we pray to God for healing, we pray to God for provision and whatever we ask him for the enemy is going to attack. So he's against you and I praying and developing that intimacy. But let's not get lost. Why do we pray to the Father? Um, and you can get deeply theological on this and you can look for all sort of reasoning to me it's pretty simple because jesus did the lord's prayer let's start off with the most basic how does he start our father who art in heaven so he first of all tells us who we pray to and then he gives the address of the father as well our father who art in heaven in other words God, the Father, is above all, over all. Jesus always prayed to the Father. Go and look at the account in, in Matthew and Luke, um, where Jesus, before his crucifixion, who does he pray to? The Father. Okay? And there you see this Father-Son relationship with Jesus the Son, requesting assistance with this burden that he's got to bear from the Father. Just before the, the ascension of Jesus, Jesus prays again for the disciples and for all of us who would come after the disciples. But he starts off by saying, my Father, my Father, okay? And there it is. That should be enough for us there shouldn't be any confusion the lord can't make it clearer than the example he gave he wanted to teach us how to pray okay and that is why we have the 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 lord's prayer as as a basis for our prayer life but he wanted to teach us who we are praying to in fact, if you go and look before he shares on the, the Lord's Prayer, in the Sermon on the Mount, he is addressing um, not only his disciples, but this, this, this multitude of people are sitting around. They're there in their hundreds or thousands, we don't know, but there's a whole lot of people and he's busy talking on prayer. And he says this in Matthew 6 verse 6. But when you pray, okay, so when you pray, he's going to give you an instruction now. Go into your room. Close the door. Okay? Make it private. It's between you and God. Okay? And here it says, and pray.
to the Father who is unseen. Man, I will tell you now, the Father's perhaps unseen, but is not unfelt. You can feel him when you intimately engaged in prayer. But there Jesus is saying, Yahweh yeah, is people, I want to teach you something. Pray to the Father. And another time he says, whatever you ask um, for, ask the Father for in my name. Again, it keeps on coming through. The Father, the Father, the Father. That is who we address our prayers to. And we do that because we got this picture then of, first of all, where the Father is, and we understand that the Father wants what is best for his children. When that gets skewed, that vision of a father taking care is because of, of our worldly examples, our own dads perhaps, or you know of other dads that weren't exactly this great father, but that is not God, and, um, and that is not God the Father. Um, that's a completely different relationship on a, in a completely dis, dis, different sphere of existence. So you can develop this trust of the Father as you develop your relationship with the Father, but then you've got to be praying to the Father. You can't develop your understanding of God the Father or God as a Father if you're not interacting with that Father. You see, if you were praying to Jesus, where do you learn about the Father? Where do you get that, that vision of a Father's love and the provision that a Father gives? There's only two occasions that I can pick up where people actually prayed to Jesus. And one of them, depends on the translation, could have been to God. And the one instance is the thief on the cross with Jesus. He says, I will be, um, well, he says, Lord, he calls Jesus Lord, speaking to, to him, person to person. He wasn't addressing God. And the other one is when Stephen, um, when he was stoned, he said, Lord, I commend my spirit into your hands. But that instance could have been, he was talking as God as Lord. So it's only those two. The rest of the examples in the Bible is always Father. Even Paul in Ephesians 3, uh, man, I think it might be 18, I'm not sure, but go read Ephesians 3. It says, I bow my knee before the Father. We've got this picture of how it should be because Jesus painted that picture for us of you and I praying to a loving Father who is in heaven. Jesus went one step further and in John 14, 28, he says to us, the Father is greater than I. Okay? That just underlines it for me. So you got the question, who do I pray to? It's definitely the Father. Hope you learn something, hope you applied something, go look up those scriptures. This is stuff you've got to get into your heart and you've got to take hold of for yourself. We will look at in the coming in the coming weeks, you know, pray to the Father, through the Spirit, by the Son. We will look at those two aspects as well. Be blessed, keep praying. A praying church is a powerful church and a praying person is a powerful person, and the prayers of a righteous man or woman availeth much. In other words, it achieves what you're praying for. Like you heard last week, God will always answer those prayers according to how God perceives that prayer, but it will always be answered. And I'm confident your prayers will avail much. Love you. Catch you next week.